All right, let's take a look at some of these uh, exercises that I have assigned to you for your uh, own personal interest. Um, so first one says Charles claimed the function f of x equals 3 has to the x represents exponential decay. Explain the error Charles made. So this is a common error. Uh, students assume that if it's a fraction being raised to an exponential power that it's um, exponential decay. But even though 3 halves is a fraction, it is still bigger than 1. So uh, anytime you're multiplying by a number bigger than 1, then uh, you got yourself some exponential growth, not some exponential decay, Charles. Get it together. All right, next one, the exponential function models the amount of money in Zachary's savings account over the last 10 years. Is Zachary's account balance increasing or decreasing? Well, Zachary, things are not looking very good for you right now. Uh, it is decreasing uh, because we are multiplying by a number way less than one. Um, all right, so write the base in terms of the rate of growth or exponential decay. So since it's decreasing, uh, since we're multiplying by 0.4 each time, since uh, 1 minus 0.6 equals 0.4, uh, that means it is decreasing by 60%. Jeez, who is this, Zach? Boy. Uh, decreasing by 60% each year. So he is not saving his money his parents gave him. Okay, next one. Two trucks were purchased by a landscaping company in 2016. Their values are modeled by those functions. Which function models the truck that is worth the most after five years? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug five into that function uh, and see what I get. So if I go oh, sorry, this is very awkward. Um, if I go 35 times 0 0.85 to the uh, what do you want? Five years? Okay, five years. Uh, that truck will be worth uh, 15.53. Assuming we're thousands of dollars again. They're not really doing a good job of making that clear. So 15.53. <laughs> Obviously they didn't buy a landscaping truck for $35. Anyway, 15.53 thousand for that one. Then if I plug 5 into the G function, so if I figure out what uh, 46 times 0.75 to the 5th power is, that works out to be 10.91. We're assuming 1,000. Um, so which function models the truck that is worth the most after 5 years? That would be the function f of x. So again, even though this one was worth uh, less to start with, since this one is decreasing in value by 25% a year, this is only decreasing in value by 15% per year, uh, this guy is actually going to be worth more after five years than the other one. Uh, okay, we did that one yesterday. Okay, number 10. Cindy found a collection of baseball cards in her attic worth $8,000. The collection is estimate, estimated to increase in value by 1.5% per year. So the first thing we're going to do is write ourselves a function. So we're going to go y equals 8,000 times 1 plus, and I'm doing plus because it's increasing in value, uh, 0 0.015 because 0 0.015 is 1.5% uh, as a decimal. So that's our uh, equation. So to figure out what that is in seven years, I'm going to take and plug seven in to that. So if I go 8,000 times 1.015 to the seventh, uh, those baseball cards 
Cindy, are now worth, nice job, 8,878 dollars, and don't forget your change, 76 cents. Yay. All right, uh, let's see, describe and correct, did I sign this one? No. Okay, so we're going up to 12. Okay, in the year 2000, the population of St. Louis was that, and it decreased to this much by 2010. If this population decrease were modeled by an exponential decay value or decay function, what value <coughs> would represent the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is the starting value which in this case is 346,900 and quattro. All right, uh, we did these yesterday, so now we're moving on to uh, 18 through 22. Determine whether each function represents uh, growth or decay. Write the proportion and then interpret it. Okay. So, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Here we go, number 18. That is clearly gross because 2.5 is bigger than um, bigger than one. So the way I would write that is uh, one plus 1.5, um, which means, let's go, 2.5 equals, one plus 1.5, which means it is increasing by a whopping 150% uh, each time period. They don't really tell us days or whatever. Okay, number 19, uh, that is decay because three fifths is less than one. So three fifths is equal to uh, 0.6, which equals 1 minus 0.4, which means it is decreasing by 40% each time period. Number 20. Uh, that is also dk because 7 tenths is less than 1. So 7 tenths equals uh, 0.7, so that would be 1 minus 0.3, which means it is increasing by 30% uh, each time period. And finally, the last one. Uh, that is growth, because we're multiplying by 2 each time. 2 is equal to 1 minus 1, which, which means it's increasing by 100% each time period. So that one's actually kind of an interesting one, because if you're increasing by 100%, technically what that means is you're doubling. And so that's why there's a 2 at the base of that exponential function. Um, it's just doubling every day or year or whatever it is. All right. Okay, let's jump over to number 22. Let's change our color here because I'm getting a little bored of that. Let's go with this really gross puke green. The function f of x shown on the graph represents an exponential growth function. Compare the average rate of change of f of x to the average rate of change of the exponential growth function 25 times 1.4 to the x. Uh, and they're throwing us a little loop here. They're giving us this uh, information at uh, after three days or whatever, uh, but they want us to go from 0 to 4. So in this case, this function has gone start or in four days is at 73.2. It started at 30. So that's an increase of 43.2. That increase happened over the course of uh, four years. So I have to divide that by four. So 
43.2 divided by 4 equals 10.8. So the rate of change of that function is 10.8 somethings per something. Okay, then if we want to do uh, the function 25 times 1.4 to the x, the first thing we need to figure out is uh, what does that equal in four years. And so if I ask El Calculador that, Magic Calculator says, That says 96.04. Hopefully you're following along with me on your phone or whatever. So uh, if this goes from 90 or from uh, 25 to 96.4, then that's an increase of 71.04. Now I need to take that and divide it by four because this increase is happening over the course of four years. So that's an average increase of 17.76 whatevers per whatever. So how do we want to compare them? Well, this one's increasing a lot faster than uh, this one. So there you go. Great. Good comparison. Nice job. All right, 24 through 27, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, so 24 says the population of Medway, Ohio was that much. It's expect <laughs> that's a small town. That's like Montesano. Uh, it's expected to decrease by about 0.36%. Oh, see, we're growing, so Medway sucks. Money rules. Write an exponential decay function. And then we got to use it to model. Okay, that color was really disgusting, so let's switch that up. Um, so our exponential decay model is we're starting at 4,007, and then it's decreasing by 0.36%. So i got to have a 1%. For the original population and then I have to change the 0.36% into a decimal. I know some of you are saying, but wait, it already is a decimal, but it's technically a decimal percent. So I still need to uh, move the decimal over two places. Um, so this is a, this little town's population is decreasing, but it's not decreasing by much as uh, we are about to see. So that's the function. So then if I plug in uh, 20, um, if I figure out what that is, so 0 0.0062 to the 20th power, and then uh, again, really super awkward on my other computer here, I have to go 4,007 times 1 minus 0 0.0036 oops, to the uh, 20th power. So 3,728. So they're doing fine. 20 years later, there's only like, I don't know, less than 300 fewer people. No big deal. Hang in there, Medway. Um, all right, 25. A colony of bacteria starts with 50 organisms and quadruples each day. Find an exponential function that represents the population of the bacteria after t days. Then find how many will be in the colony in day 5. All right, so y equals, we're starting with 50. In this case, uh, we're quadrupling each day. So that's uh, 4 is quadruple. So that's going to be our function. So if we want to figure out uh, how many bacteria there will be in the five days, you're going to be astounded how many they are, there are um, because quadrupling is a lot. So if I go uh, 50 times 4 to the fifth, that is 51,200 bacteria. So, there you go. Okay, 26. 
All right, the number of teams, why remaining? Okay, yeah, this is sad because we're supposed to be watching a single elimination basketball tournament right now, but whatevs. Um, determine whether the function represents exponential growth or decay. That would be decay. And the reason for that is that one half is less than one. Uh, what does the 128 represent in the function? 128 teams to start with. Okay, what percent of the teams are eliminated after each round? 50%. Because, this is going to seem a little redundant to you, well, 1 half equals 1 minus 1 half. Uh, so it's going down by 50%. Uh, graph the function. Nope, not feeling it. All right, that's that one. And then our last one, number 27. Uh, the function shown in the graph represents the number of lions in a region after X years, while the rate of decay is 20%. So sadly, the population of lions is decreasing. Well, I guess it's sad for us because we love lions. Maybe not sad for the people who live nearby the lions. Uh, the number of zebras in that same region after X years can be modeled by the function that. A representative for a conservation group claims there will be fewer lions than zebras within two years. Okay, well, let's take a look and see how many lion, or, uh, zebras there'll be and how many lions there will be. Uh, so to figure out the lions, I'm just going to look at the graph. So in two years, I'm feeling like this is uh, 300. So in two years, I'm going to go out on a limb let's say, and say... In two years, there will be about, uh, what did I say, 250 lions, maybe. Okay, let's see how the zebras are doing. So for the zebras, I'm going to plug 2 into their function. So that means I'm going to go 300 times... Be cool if this was a calculator. I suppose this probably has a calculator on it. I'll have to check that out. Uh, I'm going to go to the uh, second power. Is there a calculator tool? Tools. Du -du 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 tools. Hey, shiver my timbers. What do you know? Um, okay, so 300 uh, times 0.95. Uh oh, this is a very basic calculator. So oh, maybe there's more. Nope, that's back base. I don't even have an exponent button. Huh. Alright, well that's not worth much. Let's go to Desmos. 300 times 0.95 to the second power means that there are 271-ish zebras. So what was the conservationist group's claim? There'll be fewer lions than zebras within two years. Uh, yep. They... Hey. Hey. What just happened? Uh, my keyboard's not working anymore. Oh, there you go. Okay. Just my backspace button isn't working anymore. Okay, so that's that. I don't know why that's there. That bugs me. There we go. Um, okay, so that's that. Hopefully uh, those problems went well for you. Have a great weekend, guys. Uh, we'll do it again on Monday. Bye.